Ruchim Habayim, welcome. We're in Lukate Moharan, and we're actually I'm studying from the very beginning, the prologue. And it says, Come and see the works of God, an amazing revelation concerning the mystery of the greatness of the godly sage Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai. Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai gave assurances that through him the Torah would not be forgotten from the Jewish people. As is, as our te- sages teach in Shabbos 138b, when our rabbis entered the yeshiva in Yavne, they said the Torah will one day be forgotten by the Jews. But Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai said that it would not be forgotten as is written in Devarim 31.21. It will not be forgotten from the mouth of his offspring. And as explained in the Zohar, because of this work, the book of the Zohar, the Jews will be redeemed from exile. So now come and see and understand the hidden wonders of our holy Torah. This is why Rabbi Shimon ben Yochai based himself on this verse. It will not be forgotten from the mouth of his offspring. For it says, Ki lo in truth, the, the mystery is hinted at and concealed in this very verse. Through the offspring of Yochai, this being Rashbi, the Torah will not be forgotten by the Jews. This is because the final letters of the words in this verse, Kilo Tishchach Mipizaro, uh, are the same letters as Yochai, Tishchach. And so this is what the, the verse hints to and reveals when it will not be forgotten from the mouth of his offspring, specifically from the mouth of his offspring, that is the mouth of the offspring, the one who is himself alluded to and hidden in this verse, this being the sage Yochai, because of the offspring of Yochai, who is hinted in the final letters of the words of this verse, this being Rashbi. The Torah will not be forgotten for with this, the Zohar, they will be redeemed from exile above. And no, the mystery of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai is alluded to in another verse. Know that the Holy Sage Rabbi Shimon corresponds to in Daniel, the Sefer Daniel uh, chapter 4 verse 10. Here v'kadesh min shemea nachit. An angel, a holy one, descended from heaven, which the first letters are Shimon. So if we can look at this here, V'chadish Min Shemea Nachis. And we have the first letters that rearrange spell Shimon. And it says here in the, the footnotes, the Kaddish Shimon, the letters of the verse in Daniel spell Shimon. And the letter Vav can be voweled as an O or a Vav V sound. And so going on a little bit more, we have commentary from Rabbi Nachman. And he actually reveals another secret. And he says, after revealing this amazing teaching about Rashbi, and his father, Yochai, Ben Nachman included, Rabbi Nachman concluded, but now there is Nacha Novea Mechor Chochma, a flowing brook, a wellspring of wisdom, which is in Mishle, Proverbs 18.4, he's quoting. And so that even a holy one descended from heaven must also receive from this brook, the wellspring, a flowing brook, a wellspring of wisdom, the Rebbe not, uh, Rebbe's reference to Nacha Novea Mechor Chochma is an allusion to himself. After showing how the names of Rabbi Yochai and Rabbi Shimon are alluded to in Scripture, Rebbe Nachman quotes a verse whose first letters spell Nachman, which is actually amazing. And there's going on just a little further. It says uh, there's a, a story here. A Breslover, Chassid, once found himself alone in a distant city, not knowing anyone or having anywhere to lodge for the night. He went to the house of a local rabbi, a man not uh, known not only for his good name, but also for his Torah and mastery of the Kabbalah. Upon arriving, the Chassid knows, noticed a copy of Lukate Maharan on the rabbi's table and asked his host where he got the book. It says, do you not know this book and its author? 
the rabbi wondered. I knew the author. I am a Breslover Chassid. Do you understand what is written in it? The rabbi asked. To the best of my ability, the Chassid answered. In my opinion, the rabbi said, nobody can truly grasp this work. Just look at the pro prologue. Uh, what, what place has this teaching as the opening piece to Likutei Mahoran? You tell me, the Chassid replied. It would appear, the rabbi suggested, that Rabbi Nachman is alluding to his having the same soul as Rabbi Shimon, for the name Shimon ben Yochai has a numerical value of 501, the same as Nachman ben Simcha. And this is amazing. And in the footnotes, again, it says, incidentally, the mission of the leadership of Rabbi Nachman and Rashbi had in common is alluded to by the shared numerical value of their names, 501, which is also the numerical value of the Hebrew word Rosh, head or leader. And so, one last thing, it says the Rebbe Nachman indicates that present, presently the aim of Rabbi Shimon's teachings can only be achieved when they receive from the brook, the Rebbe's teachings, the lessons in Rebbe Nachman's Lukate Maharan are taken from the very source of the water, Chokmah, and is specifically these teachings which are in needed in order to penetrate to the lowest levels, instilling faith and desire for repentance in even those the most distant from God, those most distant from God, and repentance to Shuba is alluded to the sphere of Bina, and Chokma is clothed with inside it, and so they work together. This is where Rabbi Nachman is saying, and he says, because of this work, the book of the Zohar, and say, because of this work, Lukate Mahoran, which is the Zohar, will be redeemed from exile. For Nachman ben uh, Simcha has the same numerical value as Shimon ben Yo Yochai. And another, the ending of all this, it, it closes with this. It should now be clear by Rebbe Nachman, why Rebbe Nachman gave this lesson at the time he traveled from Breslov to Uman. As mentioned, the Rebbe saw his being called to Uman as a sign that he was soon to die. He was by no means shocked or unprepared for this. On the contrary, Rebbe Nossin writes, his whole purpose in choosing Uman as his place to die and be buried was to accomplish the rectification of innumerable souls which had been in need for this for several hundred years. And just take that in because I have a lot of um, anti-missionaries or people that try to go against what I say in my videos and say that I'm teaching wrong, especially about the death of the Zadik and how Torah does, the sages do allude that the death of a Zadik can atone for souls. But not only this, it's even greater here what Rebbe Nachman is saying. He says there's souls waiting for Tikkun. And he's the one that's going to do it. For Uman had been there been the scene of the slaughter of countless souls. And on the day before he died, he said to me, for a long time now, they have had their eye on me to get me here. There are not just thousands of souls here, but myriads upon myriads. Souls that which did not know me at all are waiting for the tikkun that I can give them. Now, for those that want to say that I'm teaching wrong or anything. All I'm doing is reading what Rebbe Nachman actually said. And you say, if I don't understand this, I have many, many Sephirim that actually can back this up with the sages themselves from their own very words. So if you are trying to say that I am wrong or what I share, you are wrong. And you do not want truth. This is what Rebbe Nachman is saying. And this is all about the Zadik. His works about the Zadik. And how those that come close to the Zadik can, can be elevated. 
and come closer to Hashem. And so you can say all you want, but this is the truth. And just find this fascinating that Rabbi Shimon ben, ben Yochai and Nachman, the secret of how they are alluded together and hinted in the Torah. Hope you enjoyed this video. And I want to thank all those that have subscribed to my channel, that share and take their time to watch my videos. I really appreciate it. I just do this to share. And if anyone's willing to listen, I will continue. And on that note, Shavuot Tov.